everybody welcome back to the channel tonight we're here with video number nine in our series of videos on our Apache helicopter PC theme build and if you remember in our last video we installed our front case intake fan and this video originally was going to be about installing our AIO our all-in-one radiator and uh, pump and lines cooling system but um, what I decided to do was install that on the top of the case after all instead of on the side so what we're going to do on the side of the case is we're going to be installing our exhaust fans. So we have our three intake fans already installed, so now we're going to be putting three exhaust fans in. So let me make some more room on the screen and we'll get started. First let me show you these fans. These fans are Thermotake Ring Plus 12 fans. Last time we installed Thermotake Ring Plus 14. They were 140 millimeter. These are 120 millimeter. These are a little bit smaller. So we're going to be installing three of these on the side of our case right here, and they're going to be exhaust fans. So our fans that we installed a few days ago are intake fans. They will suck the air in. These fans will suck the air back out. So that's what we're going to be doing tonight. So let's get started. Don't forget what I told you before, always use a magnetic screwdriver. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop this fan down through the top of the case. We're going to take our wiring and we're going to pull it through one of these access holes in the side of the case. And I believe we're going to be using the top access hole and we're going to have our wire on coming out of the top of the fan to the left like I said before each of these fans take four screws they're a coarse threaded screw especially made to screw into plastic Like I said before, we want to keep these screws loose so we can adjust our fan if need be. I always try to keep mine centered in the case, same distance apart from one another. But it's up to you how you want to install them. One thing nice about this case is it gives you a lot of room to work. hardest part about doing it is getting these screws started in through those small small grill slots in the case once you get them all started you're pretty good pretty good shape after that
I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see. Oh, there we go. That's a lot better. Much better. It's always nice to have an extra set of eyes. Okay, so there we go. We got one of our fans in. It's a top fan. We're going to be doing the exact same thing with our third or our middle fan and our bottom fan, which goes in there. So let me get to that and get these all installed. And what else we might be doing tonight is I'm going to install our backing plate that goes behind our CPU. This is what's going to hold our pump onto the motherboard. So uh, I'll show you how to install that too tonight. going to use our next access hole down for the middle fan. Stick our wire through. Line our fan mounting holes up into the correct slot. You need your exhaust fan, so remember you want to keep the air flowing. Air flowing outward. And remember what I said before, how the air, the air exits the fan where the brackets are. So that's where you want to uh, face your fans. You want the brackets going where you want the exhaust air, or the air to exhaust out from. Always keep your screws loose until you get get every one of them started. Okay, so that's fan number two. Like I said, these are going to be exhaust fans. So you want the fan part facing in toward the case. in the bracket side facing in the direction you want your air to go because your air always comes out of the side with the brackets on it. 
So we're mounting them like this. So the air is going to be pushing out of the left side of the case. Okay, let's get this one installed. Orient the fan so the wire is coming out of the top left. Do our third access hole down. One other thing I wanted to mention was I just found out from Thermotech that they come out with a new control module for these fans. Instead of us having to run two modules, they have one one module that will run all the fans. And it will synchronize with the motherboard's LEDs. So we won't have to install all that um, software we talked about earlier. It'll work off the software or uh, software that came uh, came with the motherboard, so the motherboard will sync up with these fans and all our all our other LEDs that we're installing. Like I said, these fan screws, they're a coarse thread self-tapping screw. And all they're doing is they're making their own threads into these plastic case fans. Once you get them lined up and get a couple threads started, they'll just, they'll just cut their way right in with no problem. Okay, so there you can see we got our third fan in. I wanted to try to turn these so their labels are all straight up. They got a mind of their own. There you go. Three Thermotech 120 millimeter fans set up for exhaust on the side of our case. And they're going to light up like uh, like crazy when this thing turns on. I mean, each one of these fans has, I believe, 12 LED lights on it. And they will sync with the motherboard software, like I said. So whatever the lights on our soft on our uh, motherboard, whatever color they are, we can get these to match it. Except for our memory, the motherboard won't control the lighting on the memory. The memory has to be controlled by uh, since this is Corsair memory, it's going to have to be controlled by uh, Corsair IQ software. So, uh, but we can still sync the color, that's no problem. We can sync the color with every RGB light, every LED light that we're going to install in this case. We can make it all uniform or we can make it um, different colors. We can do anything we want. I mean, it's just, um, you know, your imagination's a limit as far as what colors you want to make it. Being this is a uh, replica of an Apache helicopter, I want to set it up so I can blacken it out whenever I want to. Just like an Apache helicopter would do to make it real stealthy. And then I can uh, light it up to, uh, you know, whatever we want. Just say yours uh, logo here on the motherboard. 
This is also an LED. There's also LED lights below this memory. And there's LEDs up on this AORS logo up here. And uh, yeah, they look, uh, I got a couple of these other boards and some of my other computers and they look pretty cool. I mean, I really, uh, I really like that board. I stuck with the ninth generation because it's been around and it's proven. In fact, uh, Gigabyte just released a BIOS update for this board. So, like I said, I got two of these boards and uh, two other of my builds. So I had to update the BIOS for, uh, basically for some, some uh, security issues. And uh, I believe there was something in there to make it more compatible with uh, the new Windows 11 operating system. And that's what we're going to be installing in this computer. We're going to be putting the new, uh, the new Win Windows 11 operating system, 64-bit, in, uh, in, this, in this computer. I really don't think anybody uses 32-bit anymore. I think that's kind of a thing of the past. So, uh, yeah, so we got our three side case fans. And like I said, these are exhaust fans. And uh, this case makes it real convenient to to uh, put your wires out through the slots right beside the fan. And once we get over on that side of the case doing our wire management, over on this side, you can see how these how these come out of those slots. These will all tie together and uh, make them look real nice and neat. And then they'll go into our module that we're going to mount on the side of the case here. So yeah, that's going to work out pretty good. So don't forget what I told you about these fans. You see how we have the brackets facing outward? That's because we want the air coming out this way. The air, you know, I can't emphasize enough that that air always comes out of the back of the fan or the side of the fan that has the brackets on it. Then your fan side right here, with your blades on it, that air is going inward into the blades. So that's pretty easy to uh, remember. So okay, I mentioned that we might be installing our uh, backing plate for our for our CPU. So uh, the way you do that is this comes with your uh, cooling system, whatever cooler you decide to use either an air cooler or a water cooler doesn't matter whatever whatever one you decide to use and this is made to fit different sockets if you remember in our very first video when we stored our CPU I mentioned it was an 1151 socket it had 1151 pins on that i9 9900k processor well with the documentation it tells you how to orient these pins right here you can see they're slotted well, with 1151 and a 1200 socket, we want those pins in toward the metal is where we want them. As far in as we can get them toward the center hole, just like that. Now, if this was like a 2066 uh, CPU, we would have these outward to the most outward position. So, um, we got ours where we want them. The most inward position toward the center hole and then what you do with this is on the back of the motherboard right here this is where we installed our CPU this is the back side of it you want to take this backing plate and there's four holes in the motherboard I don't know if you can see them it's one here it's one here one here and one here and what those holes are in that motherboard for is to accept this backing plate. You can see the pins on that backing plate right there. See those pins sticking up? Well those pins fit through those holes in the back of the board. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to just put this up here and we're going to line those pins up with those holes. Let 
me get my glasses on again. Make sure our pins are in the uh, most inward position. And, uh, let's line that up with those holes. always one that gives you trouble how about it okay all four of our pins are in through our access holes in our motherboard so that's all that do does is just sets in there push one end then the other end once it come out okay so there it is we're gonna let that alone and then what also comes with your cooling system is these pins right here, these standoffs. They're threaded on both sides. You can see that. And there's also a set of these in there for an AMD application. So we're not going to bother with that. We're only worried about Intel. So, okay, so what these do is they hold this backing plate on that we just stuck through those access holes in the motherboard. So let's kind of try to hold that in place and turn this motherboard around. I don't know if you'll be able to see it with my hands in a row, but I'll show you what it looks like after I get these in. And what we want to do is we just want to thread these into those to those threaded holes in the uh, in the, into the backing plate. There's four of these. Match the four holes in the, uh, in the backing plate in the motherboard. You just want to put these in loosely like everything else until you get them all started. Okay, we're on our last one. So we can tighten them down. Now, this backing plate is made out of plastic, so you don't want to go crazy and tighten these down and strip that plastic. Because that's all it is, it's just threaded plastic. Okay, so here you can see our backing plate's installed. And what this backing plate's going to do, it's going to give support for that water pump that's going to mount on here. We're going to be installing a water pump from our AIO cooling system. And that'll be in our next video. And these here uh, thumb screws after we set our pump onto those pins that we just put in we just thread these down with our finger and these these are what's going to hold that pump onto that onto that CPU there's also thermo paste you have to apply to this also and what that thermo paste does it conducts the heat from the CPU to the core when there's any imperfections in the surface of the CPU or the surface of the cooler that thermo take or that thermo paste what it does it takes up all those voids it makes it a perfect contact between the CPU and the cooler okay so there you have it we got our three side exhaust fans in we put our backing plate in for our CPU cooler and uh, I think that's going to be it for this video. In our next video, in our next video, we'll be uh, we'll be installing that radiator. And uh, there's also three fans that go on it. So we'll have three fans and a radiator and a our pump assembly in our cooling lines to install next time. 
I figured it would be better to install these fans on the side of the case now because if I was to put the radiator in now and then these fans later I would have to work around the cooling line because these cooling lines are going to come down from the top of the front of the case and they're going to curve over in a loop like this and over to the CPU and then I would have to work around all those lines if I'd have put that uh, if I'd have put that radiator in first so I figured I'd get those fans in there and uh, get that out of the way also what I want to mention there's a uh, there's a uh, there's a pocket that goes on here it's going to hold our three solid state drives they're uh, 2.5 solid-state drives. There's going to be one, two, three, and they're going to mount right here on the side of this on the side of this case also. So it's going to be also a, a future video. So yeah, we're coming along pretty good. So far, so good. I don't uh, I don't see any issues so far. Everything's looking good, looking neat. And I kept uh, I kept these fans loose because you know, I'm going to want to adjust those so they're nice and centered and uniform in the case. I don't want them looking like a cow shit on a flat rock, if you know what I mean. So, uh, yep. So, um, there's our three uh, exhaust fans. And I um, don't think there's any other thing I want to mention in this video. I don't want to forget, because a lot of times when I finish these videos... And then I remember something I forgot to tell you. So I want to just take a couple uh, moments here and look this over and make sure there's nothing I forgot to uh, mention. You know, other than, you know, if you can see how our wires come out of these access holes, these are all going to run down and then blend in, blend into each other and then come across the case on the bottom come across the case on the bottom down below here see if I can adjust this camera down a little bit there so you can see there you go so they're gonna come all down blend in with each other tie up with each other then come across the bottom then onto the module that we're gonna be installing right around in here and then there's also gonna be a power supply wire a SATA power supply wire That'll come out through this access hole off the power supply and power up that module. Then there's also going to be another LED wire comes off the module, comes back through this hole over to the motherboard and plugs into to, uh, one of the LED headers. And that's what's going to sync these fans with that motherboard. It's so that the motherboard can see those fans, see that module. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty cool how that works all out. And um, I guess the only other thing I wanted to mention is when we install the uh, AIO, the all-in-one radiator system, it's not going to have the same manufacturer fans as we installed in the front and the side. They're not going to be thermotake. They're going to be uh, from uh, Gigabyte. They're going to be Aorus fans because the uh, all-in-one cooling system is an Aorus made by Gigabyte. 360 millimeter and so uh, but though they'll, they'll still be synchronized with the same colors but I wanted to keep all these thermotake fans together so, so we're gonna have all this lit up in here with uh, RGB and our fans we're gonna have our power supply down here that's gonna be all RGB and like I said in our first or second video, I think it was the second video when we installed our storage drives, these right here, I said that I was going to take these heat sinks back off because I have LED coolers that go on there. So we're all go also going to be doing that. I don't know if I'm going to do that on camera or off camera because that's really tedious to do. There's really, really tiny screws, even smaller than the M.2 screw that we use to uh, to uh, screw down those uh uh, M.2 storage drives. So yeah, we're uh, we're moving right along, and I can't think of anything else to mention on this video. I just don't want to forget anything.
Um, no, I can't think of anything else. So, I guess we're pretty good for this video. So, remember our next video, video 10, will be installing that AIO all-in-one cooling system. And that's going to be kind of a pain because you kind of have got to have four hands to do it. And, of course, I only have two, but you can get around that. First thing we're probably going to do is we're going to assemble that uh, AIO. We're going to attach the fans to the radiator first. And then we'll lift the radiator and the fan assembly up into the case from the inside, from in here. We'll install it in through the right side of the case. And then the screws will come down through the bottom. Or, yeah, come down through the, uh, the holes in the top of the case and into the... Uh, into the radiator and hold it securely in place. Then there's a big hood that goes on top of this case. It's like a big grill assembly that goes on top of this case. Oh yeah, and also I got the the aerials in for this too. I got two big long sweeping aerials that I'm out to the top of the case and maybe to the side, one of them to the side of the case, one on the top of the case. And they're not only for looks, I mean they're going to be for our Wi-Fi right here. These what these uh terminals right here. That's for our Bluetooth and Wi-Fi system for our, for our computer. And those aerials will screw onto here and they're actually functional. They're not just not going to be for aesthetics for our helicopter build. So yeah, yeah there's uh, still a lot coming yet. I think this is going to be really really a really good theme build. Um, so uh, I see they reduced the price of this case too. I don't know if it's because of Christmas or not, but uh, it went up in price by like two hundred fifty dollars there for a while, and now it's back down. So yeah, the case is back to where it's uh, kind of affordable. So I don't know if anybody's interested in build one and out a case like this. But like I said before, you don't have to use a case like this. You can use any computer case that you like, and these basics are all going to be the same. You may not have to install all these fans like we're doing because we're doing a lot of this for aesthetics. We don't actually need all these fans to be honest with you. We could probably get away with two front intake fans and one exhaust fan and this this whole thing would cool perfectly with a simple little air cooler uh, mounted on the CPU. What we're doing is all for aesthetics and uh, you know to make it a really cool build you know when you do theme builds you want to really go all out on them you know or you know what's the use of doing them at all so uh, you can see behind behind us there is the uh, Joker theme build I took that case and uh, completely stripped it apart drilled all the rivets out of it and disassembled it and then repainted all the parts to match the theme of the Joker so it came out pretty nice too so, um, yeah. So, okay, everybody, thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and uh, click on that little bell so you don't miss, miss any future videos. And uh, I want everybody to have a uh, great evening, great day tomorrow. And uh, thank everybody for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.